I would describe Athena as like separated because like you don't really see a lot of like group of people together. They're mainly like separated because like s some people don't get along. There's a lot of drama. Supportive when it comes to the staff, particularly. Um, I'd say it's lively, like in the hallways. Um, although there is like cliques, not cliques, but like among the races, if I were to be observant, and yeah. Um, clicky. Accepting. Um, not really diverse. Big. Diverse? In a way. It's diverse. More diverse than others. It's a school community that encompasses the haves and the have-nots. When I think of Athena, I feel like my energy is being drained. I think a division. Yeah, very depressed. I agree with you, Asia. Depressing. Um, I first noticed my race when I was 14 and I was in ninth grade because like I first entered high school, it's like a bigger area, bigger community, uh, like you see different things and like you hear different things so then you realize your race. I think like around kindergarten or first grade, like around that time. Uh, about seventh grade when I was 13, I first noticed it because um, that's when people started calling me like Oreo and like people just paid more attention to race. Like I never noticed it before really. I mean, I noticed it, but I wasn't thinking about it all the time. I think I noticed my own race early elementary school when I noticed I wasn't the same as everyone else. Ooh, first grade. Um, probably when I was able to start going like with my mom to events at her school uh, since she worked as a city school teacher and seeing how different the city schools were and just experiencing that and seeing how there was a uh, big majority of kids of other races that weren't like mostly white was when I first realized. Maybe around like seven. Cause like before, like I didn't really, I wasn't comfortable with myself. So I wanted to like always be the girl with straight hair, stuff like that. And then after a while I was like, okay, you're fine in your body. <laughs> um. Probably kindergarten. Um, there's a few examples that just come straight to my mind. The first was when I was asking another kid, that he had like a mole or something. I was like, oh, what is that? And then his friend thought I was making fun of him um, and said, well, why is your face flat? And then I think that was the first time I realized, oh, I'm different. I think I was always aware that there were different races but I didn't didn't mean something to me until I was 18 and um, a freshman in college. I would say I learned my race when I was like five or six. I knew that I looked different when I was like in elementary school but I didn't realize that race was like a big issue until probably the eighth grade when the Black Lives Matter movement started. That's when I found out that it was like a real issue. Yeah, when Trayvon Martin died, that's <coughs> when I kind of yeah. yeah. noticed. I see it mainly when like other races discriminate other races. Um, there is definitely a division like during certain activities like lunch and such. I see a division of race in the hallways, in the cafeteria, and in my classes. Yeah, it's a lot.
Yeah. Yes. It's not like the staff or anything. It's like the kids. It's like sometimes you'll be around one race group and then you feel out of place. So and that, that builds up a lot of anxiety. I see a division, not necessarily of race. I see a division of thought and mentality. Um, I've had a lot of students come up to me of all different backgrounds who all supported certain messages that I was trying to come, you know, to, to bring across in the lesson and the class. And so for me, it was never about um, these specific kids are the only ones that come talk to me or feel comfortable with me. It was definitely about mentality, I think. I do see a division of race in our school. While in the classroom, I see a lot of my students interacting with one another in an academic sense. When it comes to the social aspect of school, I see that um, interaction kind of uh, dissipate and I see groups of certain races um, connecting more with one another. Um, not really. No. Yeah, no. Um, I have just because of my heritage. And so occasionally people will just assume that I'm racist or because I am a woman that I can't do something like work in construction. Um, no, not necessarily for any teachers or students. Um, yeah, people have said some things to me, like in a joking way, but I, when I think back to it, I'm like, it's not really joking. Like, why are you joking about my race? Um, this one time, one kid told me to go back to the plantation. This other time, you know, call me Oreo, stuff like that. This other time, someone tried to be like, oh, what's up, my N-word? And I was like, no, like. And then they try to make jokes about me being like a servant to them. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to serve you like I'm black. I'm supposed to serve you. I don't think I've experienced discrimination. Mm hmm A lot. Out in public, everywhere. No. When I was younger, I lived in Florida for like some time with my family and I went to school and the kids weren't always so nice to me because of the color of my skin, which is fine. I mean, in a way, I guess you can't blame them. It's how they were raised. Yep. <laughs> uh, multiple times, it could be inside my workplace, it could be outside, it could be microaggressions, which is a new term now, but back then it wasn't really a term or a thing. Um, not in terms um, of, of race. I would say that I've become acutely aware of uh, discrimination or bias uh, in terms of gender. I don't think it's appropriate at all unless it's like another uh, African-American greeting another African-American. I feel like it's never really appropriate, but the wrong people shouldn't be using it. So um, I feel like the people they misuse it in all circumstances because it's not really supposed to be used in general. But among, you know, black people, they take taken power back over the word. And I don't feel like it's the right for white people to say it. Um, to be honest, I don't think anyone should use it in school because when people see black people using it, like, black people, they have this, like, understanding of, okay, like, we reclaim the word and everything, but when other races see it, they think it's okay, and they think like, oh, they're entitled to use it too. But I mean, in school settings, I don't think people should be using it that much, but outside of school, then whatever. For me, as a white male, I never think it's okay to say the N-word. Okay my point of view on using the n-word so like 
I play around with it, and like I let my friends play around with it, but like I don't really take it to the heart unless like I could tell when you mean it and when you don't mean it. Like if we playing around, I don't care. But like if you really mean it, I'm gonna take offense to it. I don't think that's up for me to. I don't think that's my choice. I think that's because it, it's not my word to say who it's appropriate for. Because I just don't have that power for it behind it. Technically, never. But at the same time, I'm not like. I don't care as much. It depends on how you say it, really. But like, I don't care anymore because we're in a new generation, new year. So, uh, for me, it is never appropriate. For uh, it, it, in my opinion, and I've listened to various people who who have thoughts on it. Um, for me, it's never appropriate for anyone who doesn't belong to the specific race in which it goes generation to generation and has been used for uh, oppressive and um, violent means, I feel it is not appropriate ever. Um, and that's just my personal belief. I say, I mean, in some cases I feel like, you know, nobody should be saying it. But then mm -hmm. again, I feel like black people took the word and made it into something. And so we should be able to say that word because, you know, it was used against us at some point. And now we kind of use it to uplift each other. And I just feel like, you know, no other race or nationality should be saying it because, you know, that word meant a lot and it has a lot of deep things under that word. So you never know, like when somebody's saying the word, you never know what they're meaning behind it, even if they're just like greeting you or something. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel the same way. And I could speak from two perspectives because like I'm half Puerto Rican, I'm half black. And my family, like my Hispanic side, they were raised around like a lot of black people. Like we were very um, mixed together, but even then they knew like the respect of not saying it because it wasn't, it's not their word to say. And even so they wouldn't say it without like that confirmation of uh, someone telling them they could say it, but other they won't say it. So I feel like it shouldn't be said unless you're black, like not the harsh ER word, mm -hmm. but like if we greeting each other or if we talking, it is our word, and we took back that power after being, like, put through a lot. Put yeah, yeah and oppressed and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like how they'd be like, "Well, if it's in the song, can we say it?" Well, actually, the people that make the songs were actually relating to it. I'm pretty sure they're not relating to it. So like, we can say it. Y'all can't. I have no relation to what the true meaning is behind mm -hmm. the words of these songs. So it's like, no, you can't say it. Just if you skip, like you skip over regular cuss words mm -hmm. yeah. when you're singing in the car with your parents, so you can you skip over yeah. that word. Uh, would like to see more clubs, um, more like, Yeah, just like more after school stuff, clubs yeah. before school stuff, little groups could get together. I think it would be nice if um, instead of celebrating silly sports teams and stuff, we actually celebrated differences. So during pep rallies and stuff, maybe instead of cheering on the teams, we have like moments where we go over different histories of different cultures that we could see at the school to educate people and such. Um, I'd say more inclusiveness, like in the classrooms, and especially like the accelerated classrooms or like the AP classes. Um, maybe more clubs that like, well, it could include everybody or more events that like, that target different groups of people to come together with things that they're interested in. And so everyone can kind of like get to talk to each other and know each other better. I would like to see more acceptance from students to other students for the race. Just more cultural, like bring more like everybody race, just not black people, just like everybody. Um, I would like to see uh, more students being educated about uh, race and the divide and stuff 
because I don't think a lot of them understand. And I think a lot of adults don't understand too. But I think there needs to be a better, a better way to educate kids and adults about the issues surrounding race. Just more like, I guess, activities that like, I don't want to say force, but force people to get together and communicate and stuff. Probably more conversation, um, more voices, and a sense of protectiveness for minority students. They need a space in which they feel comfortable, and it's difficult because, yes, it should be about inclusion, but it's also about safety. And so when minority students don't have that safe space in which they can all come together and not feel that constant sense of fear that their words are going to be taken and used against them and that there's going to be a group of students who will think a certain way, um, that is why people stay silent. So if there is no safety, there can never be conversations that are real. I would like to see more validation and more celebration of um, different groups of individuals, whether that has to do with race or ethnicity or uh, gender expression even. Um, I feel that we do a lot of tolerating um, and we don't do enough um, sort of whole community celebrating um, of the, the different groups that make up our community. Diverse staff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And more students actually participating in stuff like this, more like um, yeah. all, all races and actually clubs. joining clubs and actually, yeah, just participating all coming together. The main talk in my house is usually to mind my business and to keep low, not to say too much. Mainly, this is usually in public, mainly because sometimes the color of my skin or like because I'm a girl and some people don't have the same views as me. Besides the birds and the bees, uh, a big thing that my mom talks with me quite a lot is about education and getting a good education. That way I won't have to depend on a man or somebody else like most women have to do and to just push myself a little bit harder because I do have certain boundaries that I have to break because I am a woman. There was no talk and I think that that says a lot. Well, I think it's really important for our kids um, to have us be honest with them, especially as they're getting older. Our oldest is eight and he's learning more and more about uh, the history um, of this country. I think it's important just for us to not whitewash history and to be honest about it and how a lot of what you can learn in, in books or in school is biased at times. Um, you know, history is told from the perspective of those who have power. Um, the perspective of the victor, if you will. Um, so it's important that they understand that there are all different perspectives that make up what we would constitute as historical fact, especially when that, that comes to, to race. Um, okay, so the talk at my house is basically just going over like what to do when you're pulled over by a police or by authority or something. And you just talk about how, like, you know, you kind of have to be reminded that you're black and that you can't just walk around like everybody else does and live the same life. You have to take caution to, you know, doing things because you could be seen differently. The talk in my house was the same, like, especially because I had brothers. And mm -hmm. um, it was like, especially when the Trayvon Martin thing happened, don't walk around with your hood at night. Make sure your hands are visible. Don't when you're around authority, like a police officer, don't have your hands in your pocket. If you get pulled over, even on bikes, like make sure your your hands are being shown. You're not talking back, and you talk like as if 
you were in front of the president, you had to put on a voice. It was stuff like that. Even in like with jobs, cause that's authority too. Mm -hmm. You were taught like speak speak a certain way because you might not get that job. And even like even in the mall in school, talk like you have manners, like you're proper. Yes, proper. Mm -hmm. And it was just stuff like that. It's pretty much the same. I feel like in most black households, it's the same talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The teacher offering to stay after or like sacrificing different things for a student. Um, open to discussion, I guess, or open to different point of views of different students. Um, someone who's ready to listen, to just to listen and to try to put themselves in the student's shoes of what they're going through, and someone who will try to find solutions um, any chance that they get. I'm looking for a teacher who is accepting and relatable. He's understanding our background, where we come from. Hmm. Understanding, sensitive. Um, my parents never really had to go over something like that with me. It's kind of just use common sense, like if you were pulled over by the police, just do what they say, but there's no particular rules and that's not something that's really discussed in my house. Um, I don't really have any, I just know to be respectful. For me, I have no rules really. And in fact, I think my, I, I don't quote me on this, but I feel like my dad's like, it's okay to cry in front of police and get out of that ticket. Um, but, and I actually ended up doing that in my very first and only accident, car accident. I was crying so hard that the woman I hit actually felt so bad for me that she convinced the police officer not to give me a ticket. <laughs> and I had hit her. And so, you know, being a female and being one of the, the model minorities, I get to get away with a lot of things, to be honest. That's a difficult question. I guess I uh, acquiesce to authority um, until I would feel uncomfortable and then I might voice some concern or ask some questions, but I think when it comes to authority, I would mostly sort of take a step back. Um, good job. I'd say get out your comfort zone and make new friends even if you're not really comfortable and just you know take a chance because I made a couple new friends just going up to them so yeah you kind of have to be the one to make the first step most of the time so yeah. If you see something say talk about it tell somebody like everyone should feel comfortable here so we should all include everybody and make everyone feel included and comfortable I would say I'm thankful for the amount of acceptance that I've gotten um, I would say just to keep in mind that everyone has their own lives um, going on behind what you see every day at school and um, it's just Remember that, and keep in mind just to be nice to everybody. Mm. Be careful of certain things that you say because others might take it the wrong way. Mm. It's not mm. just about money. It um, Care about your students. Mm. Actually take your time out to listen to the student about their background, what they're going through at home. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically just getting to know the student a little bit better instead of only seeing what they do inside of school. We're all not the same. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That. Be open to getting to know other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't be so close-minded. Yeah. Um, 
I would tell them join groups, even if you feel uncomfortable. Start groups. Um, make sure your voice is heard. Never feel like you're being put, even though you are being put down, like speak out about it. Don't ever just stay in that box because outside of that box, your voice is powerful. I think Athena is a place with great potential. I think that there are a lot of students, faculty, staff with um, open minds who are willing to uh, learn and grow and I just think that it's important for everybody to understand that the, the type of work that we're engaged in and that we're doing is lifelong work. It's not something that happens in one staff meeting or two. Um, this is something that we sort of all have to deeply commit ourselves to and understand that uh, we're in it for the long haul.